Six years ago, Mike, Lacey and their three kids left the city and a 2,600 square foot house behind and moved into a small yurt in the country to try their hand at homesteading. They dreamed of living off the land and growing their own food, and with a lot of hard work, they've made their vision a reality. Mike and Lacey now feed their family with food produced on the farm. They earn a living selling vegetables from their market garden, and they homeschool their kids from the comfort of their yurt. This yurt has been the vehicle that helped us to live the type of lifestyle that we have desired to live. When we first got started in living here, I had to work off the homestead, off the farm, to supplement and provide an income for our family. But living here now has enabled us to both be here yeah. as full-time parents and full-time working on our business, our farm, running a market garden, as well as raising animals on the farm. Let us show you around. Right over here is our living room area. And this is where our family spends a majority of our time. And currently we're not totally off grid. We are tied in for electrical purposes and we use that to power things like our TV here, which we use to watch YouTube and documentaries as well as things for homeschool. And for heating, we use our wood stove. And before we had the wood stove, let me tell you, our first year here was challenging. Uh, we were heating the yurt with just small electrical heaters and we were having to deal with things like mildew. But once we got the wood stove, it just totally dried things out. We haven't had to worry about that since then. And this is our dining room area. And our goal as a family is to eat as many meals together as we can. And some days we're actually able to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner together. In addition to that, we grow a lot of food in our garden, which we'll show you here in a little bit. And another goal of ours is to eat and include as many of the foods that we grow out in the garden as we can within our meals. And this area is also used for doing homeschooling with the kids, and uh, it's one of my favorite areas. And right back here is the kitchen. And you can go as luxurious or as primitive as you want with your kitchen and your yurt. But for us, we have all the modern conveniences. Our water source comes from a well. We have a refrigerator, we have a stove and an oven, and we even have a dishwasher. And on the other side of the kitchen, we designed it so the kids would have a place to also do homeschool. If we have people over, there's another counter to eat on. And we also have these shelves over here with storage. Mike built the shelves and then we just use milk crates and we keep everything from shoes to toys um, up and out of the way. We just showed you the first half of our yurt, so we're going to show you the next part. And one of the things that we did is we set up a loft so that way originally it was planned to have where somebody could go up there and sleep but you know what during the summer and winter it gets too hot up there for anybody to want to sleep up there so right now it's just the storage area and then we come down the hallway and then on the first door on the left you have our bathroom we have a sink with a full bath and shower and yes we have a toilet too Right off of the bathroom, we strategically put the laundry room so we have a full-size washer and dryer and storage for our sheets, towels, all of that. And then over here on this side, we have closet space for all the kids' clothes. Their clothes stay right here, so come out of the dryer, get hung up, all in one place. And heading back down the hallway here is where our children sleep. We have bunk beds for them. We currently have two set up. We actually have three children, so we plan to set up another tier bunk bed here pretty soon. And people often ask, well, why don't your kids have their own separate bedrooms? Well, you know what? Families for years lived in a single room house. So they do have a nook area here with their beds and they have been doing just fine here. And right here on the other side of this door is the last room of our yurt. And it is our master 
bedroom. This is where Lacey and I sleep. We have a desk set up for Lacey where she does the video editing for our YouTube channel. And our YouTube channel name is The Fit Farmer. And on that channel we share our adventures of living here in a yurt as well as our adventures outside on the homestead working around the farm growing food and hopefully inspiring and encouraging others to live a healthy more sustainable lifestyle and we recently shared the renovations that we've been doing to our yurt here we had a temporary vinyl siding that we recently removed and replaced with a hard permanent siding and another renovation that we have done is installing real windows and it's been so nice to be here in the bedroom looking out the windows and seeing our homestead, seeing the pond, seeing the chickens, seeing the ducks. It's just so nice to look at. So this is our home. And though it hasn't been challenge free, we have enjoyed living here. Some of the challenges include just adjusting to living here. Like one of the adjustments is adjusting to the rain. When a heavy rain comes, it can be kind of loud in here. Yeah, it's great when there's just a little, but don't count on making any phone calls whenever it's really pouring, because you can't hear anything. <laughs> Prior to living here, we lived in a spacious 2,600 square foot brick house in the city. I was a massage therapist, had an extra room where I could work from home. At that time, I also worked as a personal trainer in the fitness industry and was a professional natural bodybuilder. And being in that industry, I was really drawn towards health and eating better and living a healthier lifestyle. As we started having kids, the desire to want to grow healthier food began to grow more and more. We started a garden in our city plot and started raising some food for ourselves. And we saw just how much we could grow in a small space and that was encouraging too. And we got to the point where the city life just no longer fit the desires and dreams that we had for our family. So at that point, we decided to pretty much sell everything we had and move to the country. The only challenge was we didn't necessarily have a lot of the economical resources. So Craigslist comes into play. <laughs> And I was randomly searching on Craigslist one day, and what do you know? There was a yurt right there. We found our yurt, bought it, moved out to the country. On some family property, well, we had to tear down a house and set up the yurt. And this process was pretty challenging from tearing down the old house that was previously here to beginning setting up the footing for our yurt, setting up the concrete block pillars, and then we finally got it set up and we were finally able to move into our yurt. And that was such a good feeling. And it wasn't anything fancy. It was just what we needed. As we started our homestead journey here, it started off with us primarily growing food for our own consumption to provide healthier food for us and for our family. And as the journey continued, we eventually started a market garden in which we started producing food for others to consume. And a part of that system, we grow a variety of different vegetables and we start a lot of them from seed indoors and then once they become starts we take those starts into our greenhouse where they are prepped until they are ready to be transplanted. Let's go check out our greenhouse. Here in the summer we're growing mainly tomatoes which Josiah and I were just harvesting. And speaking of the kids they help out with a number of tasks here on the farm. We do a lot of the tasks together yeah. and it's really important to us to involve the kids in this way of life so that way these skills are passed down to them and they actually know where their food comes from even at an early age. And this is my garden. And I call this my apothecary garden. Mike added this for me last year so I can grow the medicinal plants that I enjoy growing, like calendula, which is great for skin healing, and yarrow, which you can use to stop bleeding for cuts and things of that nature. And I really enjoy growing our own herbs so that we can take care of our family. And this is our market garden. And we sell primarily to two types of customers, restaurants and individual customers that we service through our CSA. And the produce that we grow here, I categorize into three areas. One, our greens. And we'll oftentimes mix those into a salad mix, which is a really good seller for us. And the next category is root crops. And lastly, summer crops. 
In addition to running a market garden in which we run in about four seasons of the year, we also raise livestock too, like these chickens here. And our homesteading journey began with chickens. When we lived in the city, they had ordinances that said, no, you can't raise chickens. So we were like, you know what? No, we're leaving here. We're moving out to the country where we can grow food and raise animals the way that we want to. So we started with chickens, raising them primarily for egg production, which we enjoy having a nice farm fresh egg for breakfast in the morning. And we also started raising them for meat production. But in addition to the chickens, we also raise ducks as well for eggs. And it's so nice having a pond, seeing the ducks go out and just express their duckness in the pond. It's pretty interesting to think back when we got started. I think we over romanticized it a little bit as far as underestimating the work that would be involved, the pests that we would have to deal with, and even dealing with animal death. It could be way more challenging than you think it would be. However, I would say that we underestimated how satisfying this way of life can be. Connecting with nature on a regular basis is amazing. This way of life has also given us the ability to create a business in which we can grow and produce food for other people. More and more people are wanting to know where their food comes from and it feels good being a reliable source for food for other families. And one thing that I really love about living the homestead life is the diversity of tasks that you have to do. It's different from day to day and season to season. It's a living and breathing system and being part of that is really special. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this. You can also follow Mike and Lacey on YouTube at The Fit Farmer. Thanks for watching.